All right. I said, my name's Bob Whitby. I know that. I'm linebacker coach at Menominee now. You're right. That's and I'm in Stout now. The one thing I do know is I'm Bob Whitby. I've been there for 66 years. Okay, and I'll be that next year. Okay, while well, I'm still around. I don't know if I'll be the linebacker coaches. Okay, I don't know what I'll be coaching. I don't know where I'll be coaching. Okay, that's what I do. Bob Whitby's who I am. All right. And that's what we really are here to talk about today. All right, all your other sessions today are going to talk about how to coach football. You can go ahead, Josh. Okay. I, I think when we talk about character, we have to say, you know, we got all those old saying, what's character? Well, it's, we are when nobody else sees you. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's that type of thing. But go ahead. Uh, really, we've got to define it in terms of what it is integrity, honesty. Excellence, compassion, courage, teamwork, commitment, service, and then the, the bottom one there, love. Okay, uh, that's one that I've really picked up on in, 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 in the last couple of years a lot. Is that we don't talk about it a lot, but those things we talk about when we talk about integrity, or excuse me, character, is those are the things we look for. Those are the things we want to teach, but we have to be intentional. Okay? We have to be intentional about what we do. All right, next slide. How do you teach character? And that's why I'm going to kind of go off today, is that this is not about the kids today. This is about you. Okay? This is about you. Because we can say one thing, but kids see how we act. All right? It, it, that, that little movie could talk about the guy, you know, it talks about, you know, <clears throat> your actions, you know, well, speak so loud we can't hear what you say. And we can say things all we want. Go ahead. Ah, they, they say, and then this is, uh, let's have this, two most powerful words in the English language are coach says. Okay? And they'll talk about that. They used to mean a lot more when I was growing up. Okay? They used to, you know, old people, they used to actually, you know, they'd run through walls for you. Now they ask you stuff. But that was it. And I believe this for the longest time, but now, Go ahead. You know, coach says, is that, I, I don't know if you guys ever given this talk, speech, what are your priorities? Faith, family, school, food. anybody ever talk about that? Anybody? Okay. All right. I gave it years. They played for me at the Mount, played for me now, those were it. So one day, I, I, <clears throat> a kid who played for me was our student assistant. And he comes in to me and goes, you know, coach, he says, you give that speech every week. All right? And he says, you know, I'm pretty sure God's number one in your life, but I know football's a close second. Okay? So I'm giving this speech every week, and these kids, but they're not, they're not hearing that. They're seeing what they see, which is, that's it. You know, family, I remember when I, I, when I said, out, we're going to do a family vacation before the season. So you know what we did? Well, we left Lady Smith and we drove to Platteville and watched the Bears practice. Okay, that was, that was, and then, oh, I took him to the Dells, all right? Well, it just so happened that the week before I got a call from a mom whose son was thinking about backing out, who lived in the Dells. So we went to the Dells, and then, oh, Josh Lake Basin, we went to a brewer game, and then on the way home from Milwaukee to Lacey, we went through Green Bay and took in the Packer practice. Family. You know, I can tell you how much my wife, oh, I did stop at the house in the rock for my wife and that whole thing. But <laughs> that was it. Okay? What did my kids hear? What did that? And that's the same with our players. They don't hear me say this. Too. Go ahead, Josh. No, it's what coach does. If I don't honor my family, players aren't. Okay? <coughs> and do I let them? Okay? Do I let them? If somebody's sister's getting married, God forbid, during the season, and that kid has to go to the wedding, how are you going to react? Are you going to say, well, what means more? And it's tough. It's tough. But a family's supposed to mean more. We're, we're, this weekend, my family, uh, we turned 60, 
And that was the first one. We always get together on that birthday. So my family, brothers and sisters over in Lanesboro, okay? And I drove in today, because the family weekend, I drive up here and speak, and I'm going back. But I missed two of my sister's weddings because I had games. Okay, well, I have five sisters, so there's enough to go around. But, uh, you know, I don't know how that was teaching my kid, the kids. That's a once in a lifetime, okay? And I know games are important, I know that team. But you gotta, you gotta sometimes you gotta look at the kids, you gotta look at their parents, all right? That may be their only sister, okay? Uh, working with Plate, we had a kid miss this year. His sister got married. And you know, Plate, you know, he was fine with it. At least on the surface, he let the kid know. He was fine. Because that was important to them. It's, the mom called, you know, and he placed it. Hey, if, if, if we're going to put that up there, then we better follow it. Otherwise, don't, don't put it up there. Don't put it up there. Because if you put it up there, it goes back to what we said. Where's your integrity? Okay? Be what you say you are. If, it, if football or whatever's up there, same thing with faith. All right? You know, we, we, you know how do you schedule practice? You know, Wisconsin has this Wednesday night thing. You know, and it's, we certainly don't have those. But, you know, I can remember walking to our gym, and there's open gym. And I said, I, I thought we were close. I went, well, no, this is voluntary. When was the last time you saw a voluntary open gym for basketball? Okay, so you open it up, you're asking them to make a choice. Or, or that's only for the younger kids. Well, the younger kids want to be like the older kids, so they come to open gym. All right, Josh. Billy Graham said, a coach can influence more people in a year than most people in, will in their lifetime. And you better believe that. You better believe that you can influence. And it's not only the kids, it's the parents, all right? It's the people in the stands, it's everybody. Because... Friday nights, all right, you're the show, all right, for that community. And they're going you know, to identify with you. Every day, you're going to influence those kids, one way or another. There is no neutral. There is no flat line zero. It's either good or bad, all right? Whatever you do is going to influence them one way or another. Whatever you allow to happen is going to influence them one way or another. And I'm going to tell you right now, You've got to be more intentional than ever. Because, let's face it, pro football is entertainment. It doesn't teach the same things we do. Big time college doesn't teach the same things we do. All right? So if you're not intentional, what are they going to look at? How many kids do you want to think went home this week? How many quarterbacks were playing with inflation on the ball? <laughs> How many? Okay? I know, by clear back when, I know Stan went to River Falls, we used to always accuse them of deflating the ball when they ran that option stuff. But how many kids are going to home do that? I, I, I was driving down yesterday and they were talking about that. And they said, yeah, we're talking to the football guys. They all cheat. If that's the mentality, do we want our kids looking? Is that what we're trying to teach? Try and get away with it? And we have to watch that in our own lives. And what we do, if we skirt the rules, what are we teaching the kids? All right? If we don't, you know, how do we react to them? They're going to see that. And that's what we have to do. Go ahead, Josh. How do, you, how do you do it? Well, the first thing you need is a mission statement. Not a goal statement. Like, we're going to win the conference. Okay? Or we're going to do this, whatever. You need a mission statement. I just found, I worked, Mike was down, I worked the uh, FCA camp at Luther. And that's where it really got with me. And I, I struggled with years to do it. So, mission statement is how you're going to live your life, how you're going to coach your team, what's important. All right, there's a couple. I just got this in, from uh, Coach Yashinsky. I'll get to it later. But this is from a book he just recommended. And th there's. The mission statement there is to focus on using the transformational power of sports to shape young hearts and minds to become world changers. It's pretty heavy, okay? Doesn't talk about winning, but it talks about, to me, focus on using the transformational power of sports. Sports can change people. It can change lives, okay? If we're intentional on in how we want to do it. It's going to, excuse me, it's going to change lives one way or another, okay? If we focus on what we do, we have kids focus on what they do in their accomplishments, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change them. Because 
you know, if they win, they're going to want to win more. If they lose, if that's, what, if that's what, where their identity hangs, they're going to have trouble. Okay? People have been crushed by a big loss. I, coaching at Menominee. Okay? My first year, I come in there, and that's when Joe has won a lot of titles. And over the years that I was there, you know, the first year we went to state finals, we would go through and be third, fourth round, we'd get beat. And those kids would look at themselves like failures. And I'm like, well, I've been around a long time and haven't, and I've won a few titles, but, you know, there it was pretty much expected. I'm thinking, how can you look at yourself that way? You know, Jake, Jake knows what it's like at that last game, and, you know, it's like life ended. Now, I'll never forget Mike Schmidt, who was supposed to speak today, came out of an army and he played here at lacrosse, and he's down in Dubuque, and he came back and we were talking about it. He says, you know, I got down there, and, and he says, we won some titles, but I took off, you know, when we lost the game, you know. And these guys would look at me and go, quit whining. Go one and nine and talk to me what about what losing's like. Don't go 13 and one and tell me about losing, okay? Don't go that, now there comes a smile from Jake. Is that would be it? Is that kids 12 games? And they lose them. It's like they, they were losers. No. But that's what happens when we're, we're transaction, when it's about winning. So you gotta transform. Next one. This is a great one too. If you ever heard Joe Orman read Inside Out Coaching, that, that's one of the people who started the three-dimensional coaching. He's got some great stuff. I coach to help boys become men of empathy and integrity who will lead, lead be responsible, and change the world for good. You can do that if you're intentional. Okay? And you win some ball games too. But I coach to help boys become men of empathy and integrity to lead, be responsible, and change the world for good. So I'm going through all these, and finally I found one my own. I want to coach players to be the best version of the young men they were created to be. That's my mission statement. I want you to be the best version of a person. I want you to get better at what you do in football, but I want you to be a better person. I want you to be empathetic, I want you to be integrity, I want, I want you to be all those things, okay? The great thing I found about this is I just changed the first lines everything I do in my life, okay? I want, I want to be the best version of a, of a husband that I was created to be, of a father. I want my wife to be the best version of wife that she can be, all right, so I can help her. And she wants me to be that, because she tells me all the time how I can be a better husband. <laughs> but I want them to be the best version. I want them to be best at what they can do. What? My first year at Menominee, I can remember we had a kid, Joe Berger, and I will never forget this kid. He was a senior defensive lineman that I worried at practice that he was going to get killed every day. Because he was that kid who was just like in, in, in the cartoons, he just got whomped on every day. And we go through the season, they were about five, six games in, and you know, we're feeling great. And so I'm going to set this kid up, you know, for what he did. And so we were practicing, and we got the deal on there. I just said, you know, guys, I want you to know that how much I pre appreciate Joe Berger. Because he comes out here every day, gives us it all, gets beat up, and comes back the next day and gives us the best look that we can live that he can give. And, and I said, I, Joe, I just want to thank you for doing that. And he looked me in the eye and he says, don't ever do that. He says, this is my job. I'm no more special than anybody else on this team. This is what I'm here to do. This is what I do. And so I don't expect anything more than anybody else gets. I think, boy, that kid has it a lot better than I do. He knows a lot more than I do. Because it wasn't about what he got or what he did. It was about who he was. He knew who he was. He was a backup 13 senior. Okay? That was what he did. What he did. But who he was was a great person. All right. So, how do I teach character? I might have to look at it myself. Go ahead. Number one. This goes back to everyone. Why do you coach? All right? Why do you coach? And not just why do you coach when we're sitting here in the offseason, but why do you coach in practice? Why do you coach on Friday nights, okay, when that kid makes a mistake? I, I had a friend of mine, Tom Bauer, we played ball with, and over the years, well, he coached, I, we would be in some place, and, and we'd be right on, he says, you know, we are the luckiest guys in the world that we get to do what we do. We get to keep playing a game, 
in our age when everybody else is out working. So why did he coach? Because he just had fun doing it. He loved kids. He loved what he did, and he reminded me of that. So that's the first question you always have to ask yourself. If you're going to teach character, first of all, why do I coach? Why am I here? Now I'm going to tell you, if it's about the wins and losses, you're not going to last a lot. Because you're going to win, you're going to lose. Okay? But it's about the relationships. You know, uh, Joe Ehrman says, you know, when they ask him, well, how, they don't want to talk about this, because how do you find success? He has, says, ask me in 20 years. Ask me in 20 years if we were successful. Well, these guys are parents and grandparents and that. I'll tell you whether we were successful. I never had a chance to coach Mike Schmidt. I talk about him a lot. But he's a great young man. We were just out at the National Convention. Mike Schmidt was on a mission trip at Oneida Reservation. Uh, what, what makes us even in our industry, I'm Catholic, Mike Schmidt's Catholic. He's going to a Presbyterian yes. college, and he's doing his master's in missions at the Presbyterian Seminary. So try and figure that one out. Anyway, but that's where Mike is. We're down at the convention, Louisville, having a great time with coaching. He spent his time at, on a mission trip. You know, why does he coach? To get better. I remember when, he, when I talked to him about, so I'm doing my master's, and the president talked to me about doing missions. And Mike goes, well, I'm not going to be a missionary. You know what the president said to him? You got 150 kids, your mission, you know, that's your mission field. That's why he does it. So the first question you got to ask is, why do I coach? The next one, why do I coach the way I do? I told you before, I, I played for Link Walker in Eau Claire. Link was old school. Old school meaning that, you know, Link let you know what he thought. And in my case, he let me know what he thought quite a bit. All right? Link was, it was only later, I think he, he learned to appreciate me. I guess I got better with age. But I remember thinking that I learned a lot from Link, and I love Link, but that I wasn't going to be that way. So I went off and I started coaching. I got to Mount Scenario and I was coaching a kid that transferred Eau Claire. Okay, so I'm, I run into him later on and I says, what's it like playing there? He says, you know, coach, I just close my eyes and Link's hollering and I think of you. And I thought, geez, where did I go wrong? Okay, because why do I coach Wade? Because that's the way I was coached. Because I was just, I was just going down that road, okay? I was coached that way, so I was going to coach like that was coached because I thought I'm not the link. And I had to think about, is this really what I want to do? Well, now I had to become more intentional. Why do I coach the way I do? Well, that goes back to I have a mission statement because that will tell me how I coach the way I do. Okay? Here's a good one. How would others say I coach? Okay? Not only your players, but your parents. All right? Your fellow coaches. This is a tough one. How would, I, how would others say? Now, you know, I know we have to be thick-skinned. But sometimes we have to step back. Okay? We have to step back and say, you know, it's really me. I remember uh, Tom, or that, that great friend of mine, you know, we would be talking about stuff. And he was a great friend. Why? Because I was coaching. I'd be complaining about something or other. And he's just looking at me and he says, quit whining. You know, we're, we're doing, you know, we're doing something we really love to do. Okay? You know, something that, it's, it's hard. I'm going to tell you. I went over Stout this year, and I thought, I'm going to transition. I'm going to see if this is what I want to do. Do I really want to do this, okay? Part time. It's going to be the assistant D-line coach. Okay, we had Chris Mort. Chris Mort was a great young kid. And so we were kind of, and then we got, just before the season, it all blew up. We lost our offensive line coach the uh, third week of July. We had to hire a young guy. Then fourth week of July, we lost our quarterback coach, offensive coordinator. Try and find a quarterback coach, offensive coordinator the first week of August. Okay? So I'm there with Clayton. He's going, I don't know what you're going to coach. Okay? Because I don't know what we're going to do. You can be doing wide receivers or whatever. So we're going through and everything. So finally we hire a young guy, and, and he says, uh, boy, i got to go over to the offensive side. I want you to coach linebackers. All right. I had never coached a 4-2. The head coach was the linebacker coach prior to this year. All right, and I had two days preparation, and I hadn't coached college in a while, and I was, you know, that we have meetings now. We got all this, we got all this AV stuff. We're showing clips, and we're doing installs and that. And I was lost. I'm gonna tell you right now, if I was head coach of Stout, I'd probably fired me this year. It was not my best year, because I was just kind of, and we go to meetings, and, and these guys are all talking about all this stuff to do, and so I just kind of, 
you know, I'm being quiet. Because, you know, I'm not coming out because, like this, they're going, well, he doesn't say anything in meetings. You know, and, 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 and I got these young guys, they're switching all the time. We go through all the installs, and every week we do three new blitzes. And I'm t it took me like six, eight weeks to figure out concepts because they're going through all this stuff. All right? So this year, it wasn't, it wasn't my best year. I, you know, when I got my evaluation, that was the first thing I wrote. This was not my best year of coaching because I wasn't as prepared as I wanted to be. You know? And so, how would others say I coached this year? wasn't a great year. I talked to my players about it. You know, there were some things I did well, which I you know, was comfortable with, cut character stuff in that. But some of the on the field stuff, it wasn't my best year. Next year, I'll be better once I find out what I'm going to coach. But uh, that's one thing, you know, and mind you, oh, you can coach anything. Well, give me at least a week. All right. <laughs> All right, go ahead. And then, how do I define and measure success? It's the big one. It's not only how do you define it, but how do you measure it? All right. Uh, Coach just gave me a great book. All right, Burn Your Goals. And I'm reading that book, and it, every coach should read Burn Your Goals. Because it talks about so many of the goals we set, we have no control over. Okay, win the conference. Okay? That we go out and work hard, but it's not sometimes, it's not how good we are, it's how good they are. You know, I talked to Pat Rice a couple years ago, you know, when they were on that run, they won, what, three in a row or something like that? You know, and, and uh, Pat beat us semifinals like 21 19 with your four picks. Okay? So we're talking afterwards, and he says, you know, Bob, what people don't understand is when you get to finally, probably the final four, it's a crapshoot. It's a play here, it's a play there, it's whatever. You know, and, and we've, we've won the crapshoot. He said, if you put us back in the pool again, shuffle it up, and we play again, chances are we probably aren't going to win it. We had our shot and we took care of it. Okay? So if you measure your success in that, and you ask your kids to, it's going to be tough. You know? If, if you've got to have attainable goals to measure success. You know, you can ask kids to, to work hard. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can measure that. You can look at their attitude. How they, you know, you can see how those kinds of things. But when you start attaching, you know, how many have goal sheets after their games? We do. How many interceptions, how many yards, and all this kind of stuff. It depends on who you play. Okay? Kid breaks a long run, and there goes your rushing goal. Okay, one kid misses a tackle, especially when we play, they spread you out, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. All you got to do is have one kid miss a tackle, and you can, oh, no plays over 25 yards, so that one's gone. You know? We, we, we're in the league this year, I'm you, there's white water. Okay? And then there's Oshkosh and Platteville, and Point, and the rest of us. And every one of those other games came down to the end of the game. And we didn't win a whole lot. You know, we went up to River Falls, our kid threw five touchdowns. Okay? Next week, we get beat last last run of the game at point, and he threw five picks. Okay? I kept going to our offensive coaches. I kept going, what's the magic number? And they go, what number? The number one we quit throwing the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Don't anybody call those guys and say I did that. But it is. It's like, okay, five, was it six, seven? Let me know. I, I love Coach Yashinsky. I'm talking the other day. Runs the option. You know what he told me? They led the conference in passing. But 13 touchdowns and two interceptions. 14 touchdowns, two picks. Yeah, option football. I wish we did that. But how do you define and measure success? First, you have to define it, and then you have to be able to measure it. Anything else? But make sure it's, it's, it's not those goals that are, it's got to be something you're in control of. I love practice. Why? We control practice. We can control practice who's going to win and lose. We can control practice who's going to win. Play, coach coach Labuda was an offensive coach. Okay? So he can control practice. So he would wait till we playing scout, till we had like a nose guard playing corner, and then he would throw. <laughs> Look, can't cover it. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, pity the poor kid who broke something up. He shouldn't have been there. They'll never play that, you know, until they do, you know. But you can control. Same thing on defense. You can control. I, you know, say, coach, I can control. I, we made it out the script. We can control that. 
We can control the one-on-ones. You can, you know, <clears throat> you can put the kid in a situation that's maybe getting a little told, full of himself, that he's not going to succeed. At the same time, you can take the kid who's struggling and put him in a situation where he can succeed. All right, and that's what we really want to do. So when you're talking about success, how do I define it and measure it? Okay, Josh. I love this. Okay, Jake. When kids graduate from now, they always got a book. And I always write the same thing. You can tell a man's future by the friends he makes, books he reads. So choose your friends wisely, and read great books daily. Okay. I we haven't had coach, and we're we gave you books, and he said, I don't have time to read. It's about winning. He says, well, you're never going to last here if you don't read. Okay? You're never going to last. Okay? By the friends you make. You know, I, I, I was spent most of my time as a guidance counselor. And I was always tell kids, if you want good grades, hang out with kids to get good grades. Okay? That's how you're going to get good grades. If you hang out with kids don't get good grades, you're going to struggle because when it's time to study, they aren't going to study. I told you, on the team, you, you want to hang out with kids to get better? Hang out with kids that are going to be in the weight room. Hang out with kids that are going to make that choice. You know, that's what the Goldstein book talks about. That choice, do I go to the weight room today or do I go screw around? All right? When it's time, with, you know, if you choose friends that are going to be part of kids, you're going to end up doing it, okay? You're going to end up going to some place you shouldn't go. You're going to have to make those choices. It's interesting, the longer you're in this and that, the older you get, how your friends change. Because your friends become those people with like values. Those things where it's important to them. I have a lot of acquaintances. And I have some great acquaintances in football. But I wouldn't call them true friends. Because sometimes we don't share the same values. You know, when it comes to faith, family, and football. I want to be around those people who have those same values. I want to be around the people who define success the same way I do. Now that's not saying, we want to win. If I had a choice between winning and losing, I'll take one in every time. Okay? But, at the same time, I want to be around people who, you know, when it comes down to crunch time, their integrity is going to come through. They're not going to make that choice just to win and sacrifice anything else. And that may be cheating with that. It may be with the player. Okay? They may put a player in jeopardy. Okay? So, so you choose your friends wisely and read great books daily. I didn't put it on here, but I always finish mine with, so, read your Bible daily and know that God's with you at all times. I've given that out. The whole time I was in Omni, I started at, uh, at Stout. I give a book. Some of them may be the only book they ever read, but I guess we still have books today. All right, so, four minutes. Four minutes. What you have to say, who are your friends? Do they share your values? Do they encourage you and hold you accountable? Who's the guy that will encourage you? I remember when I got fired, the first phone call I got was from Tom Bauer. Because, you know, here I was. I, I came home, and uh, from Christmas vacation, I get a call. I get the call. See you in the morning. All right? How do I got to recruit? See you in the morning. All right. Now, I was coach of the year. Second time in three years. And I thought, hey, you know, must be getting a raise. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out well. All right. <laughs> so, I get fired. Okay? So, who's the first phone call but from Tom? You're going to be okay. All right? And I said, well, that's fine for you to say. I don't know without a job. But he was encouraging. He was also the same guy who would hold me accountable when I was whining. All right? It's a guy who's, who's always there for me. So who are your friends? Do they share your values? Okay? Do they encourage you and hold you accountable? And that's, that's important. Who's that person who's going to, you know, not only encourage you, but when you're starting to go someplace, you shouldn't, they're still going to hold you accountable. As coaches, we need those people in our lives. Because there are times when we'll start uh, getting close to the edge. Okay? Either with players or whatever. Okay? You know, and, and Joe is a great friend. And I think the only reason, one of the big reasons he kept me around, because I was a guy who would come in and all of a sudden say, Joe, I don't know if what we did today was the right thing to do. And he'd hunker down on that, and pretty soon he'd come back. Sometimes he'd say, well, you know, it wasn't. 
you know, it wasn't the right thing we did today. Because we all get emotional. We need those people in our lives, okay? And I need them in mine, okay. Go ahead, yep. Listen, the last five books you've read, we'll tell you about it, go ahead. Um, I don't know. Sideline, Chuck Pagano. That was like a two-day read, okay? Finding True Happiness, Bishop Sheen. How Good Do You Want to Be by Saving. Great book. We wrote one at LSU. Lead for God's Sake. I got that from Mike Schmidt. He's passing around there. It's kind of a, a narrative book. And then All Pro Wisdom with Matt Burke. All right. These I've read since, you know, I try during the season, you try to get one a month if you can. Next up, First Team Dad. I just got this is, uh, down at the convention. Grand Taft Son in Law. And then I've already moved Burn Your Goals Up by Metcalf and Gilbert. I'm already reading that one. And so that's good. All right, next one. Also, what are the last five movies you've watched? Okay? Now, I have grandchildren, value family. All right? My wife and I, we go through. When the Academy Awards come out, we have seen 90% of the animated. A best picture, maybe one. All right. So I've seen Night at the Museum, When the Game Stands Tall. I really like that one. I've seen Penguins of Madagascar. Three, is that two or three? Uh, Great One, Seven Days in Utopia. It's kind of a small film, but I really like it. The Wig was another one. I really like that one. Uh, I just saw Paddington Bear last weekend, saw the new one there. Unbroken and Exodus. Those are the movies I see. Some for my grandkid, some for me, because I want to, is it going to make me better? So you're going to make me a better person with the movies I watch. Go ahead. To teach character, you have to be a man of character. It's don't do as I <coughs> say, do as I do. And so when we talk about character, and what I talk today, it's been about is that you can't teach it if you're not doing it. You can't teach it if you're not doing it. Because they hear it all. What they want to do is they want to see it. They want to see what you are. If you, value, if, you're, if you value your wife and your family, they'll learn to value them. If you don't, you know, you won't. And that's one thing you read books by Coach Ben around. Saban's book, he talks in there. He, he tells a story about, he has a big boat in his house someplace. He's coming, he's mooring the boat or whatever you do with him, and he comes out and he slips and he falls and he hit his head and fell in the lake. Knocked himself unconscious. The guy who was with him pulled him out, otherwise he'd drown. <clears throat> and he said, the thing that got out of that is I realized how fragile life is. And my, how important my family was. I could have been gone and missed so much, you know. And so he changed the way he approached it. He said, you know, he's a grinder, but he's, he, he became more intentional with his family. All right, if you want to be a man of character, you have to be a man of character to teach character. All right. Some of the things I go to, the FCA Coaches Academy, that's an online thing. If you go there, it's all, it's sec, you can do a secular version too. It is a great resource in coaching kids today. It's videos. Jeff Duke who worked with Bobby Bowden, did it. There's a video and a short thing. It is just a great thing. That it, I can't recommend it enough for you and your staffs to go through or you individually. It's free. It's all online. Everything's there. Just talking about it's different coaching today. It's different coaching because kids are different. They ask questions. It's different because parents are different. Eddie Andrews, our basketball coach, I was talking to him, he was at a speech, uh, a talk, and they were talking, and the guy was talking about helicopter moms. And Eddie, Ed, if you know Eddie, Eddie has always got to get the last two cents in. So he goes up to the speaker afterwards, and he says, you're behind the times. The speaker goes, what do you mean? He says, there aren't helicopter moms, there's bulldozer moms. Those are the moms that clear the road so their kids can get through. He says, that's what we're dealing with today, bulldozer moms. All right, so SCA Resources, Coaching to Change Lives, uh, Dennis Parker, D.W. Rutledge. I brought them into Bruce 20 years ago. All right, and they came and speak. Inside Out Coaching, that's another one. Coach for America uh, is uh, Joe Ehrman, and then 3D Coaching, three-dimensional coaching, body, mind, and soul. All right. I share this poem I used to share it with our kids, you know, about you got to be a role model. You guys probably read this before. One minute. Yeah, I'm just, this could be it. 
But I think you need to read this and you just Google the life part and it'll come up. And if, don't give it to your kids. You read it. And realize that at the end it talks about those little eyes. Those are your players that are looking to you and how they should be. Those are those young kids that are sitting in the stands that want to play for you. Those are the little eyes. So don't, I no longer, you know, I still give it to our players, but I also give it to our coaches. Because we think, well, we coach these guys every minute. No, they're still kids. And they're still going to look to you. Go ahead. All right, there I am. Uh, if you want any of this stuff, get a hold of me. I, I got it on Google, I think. All right, I'm pretty sure I do. I came down today, I had a flash drive, I had my computer, and I had it in the cloud, wherever that is. Because I've seen something going on. But hey, I just want to thank you for your attention. I want to thank you for uh, coming. And best of luck to all of you. Thank you.